two promising areas of interest on either side of the Pacific. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Right now, there are no current tropical cyclones active, and no remnants either for that matter, but we are in code blue for an area of interest in the western Pacific right now, as well as a high chance of formation in the eastern Pacific that we look upon this evening. Let's go further in depth and take a look at what's going on around our basins. Day 56 of Atlantic hurricane season and still we're not seeing any areas of interest to potentially add on to the three tropical storms that we've seen so far. Some people are starting to get a little bit, um, a little bit, uh, restless, that's the word. Day 73 in the Eastern Pacific and we've now got this high chance of development. We've given 70%, still not quite as confident the National Hurricane Center. It looks like it will become a tropical cyclone at some point during the next five days, uh, so that could well become our next named storm. In the Western Pacific, we're now giving a 50% chance for what is known as Invest 93W, located near the Northern Mariana Islands and expected to travel towards the Northwest and eventually through the Northern Ryukyu Islands, possibly headed towards China. Uh, so we'll wait and see what happens with that one too. Indian Ocean, we are still monitoring this area of interest in the South Indian Ocean that it feels like we've been waiting to pop up for ages and ages on the GFS forecast model. It's been there for weeks, probably months. It's still there with a small chance of development, but it is small. Satellite imagery of the Atlantic right now shows this picture, which unfortunately is not updated on my end, so I've got to get some more imagery up on my other monitor to tell you what's going on. General thunderstorm activity across the Western Atlantic, but overall in the Atlantic Ocean region, it is actually very quiet with dry air dominating. Eastern Pacific, it's a similar story when you look out to sea. Further east towards Central America and Mexico, you can obviously make out those tropical disturbances. National Hurricane Center even marking the one on the western side of the current high chance as well. They've given that a low chance. Can't remember the percentage, but that big area of interest that we're looking at right now, here's some close-ups of it on some visible imagery as we reach the late hours of the day. And you can see that it is starting to rotate pretty nicely. It's getting some good organization going, uh, decent symmetry, um, or I should say convection on all sides. Um, so it looks like it is on its well on its way to becoming a tropical cyclone and poten potentially the next name on the Pacific hurricane season list. Um, elsewhere in that region, it's fairly quiet along the land areas, a few normal run the mill thunderstorms over the Yucatan and Honduras and Nicaragua. Let's have a little look at the Western Pacific as well. You can see there a few areas still trying to assert their dominance, uh, but what we're expecting really is something to come out from the eastern side of the Mariana Islands in the next few days and start to become a dominant system as it moves through the Agasawara Island chain and then potentially swivel towards the west. We'll be able to see it a lot more on the models later. And this is the Indian Ocean right now, showing a generally unsettled picture. South Indian Ocean, you can see what we're expecting might become that tropical cyclone, uh, but it has looked better. Well, maybe it hasn't actually. We've seen better. Uh, and in the Australian region here, we've got more frontal activity really dominating the pictures in the subtropical latitudes. One of them about to strike the North Island of New Zealand. More rainfall on the east coast of Australia. So very uh, winter weather like down there. Sea surface temperatures are pretty warm as you would expect in the eastern Pacific. Temperatures once again pushing 30 degrees along the coast. Gulf of Mexico getting very warm, 30 degrees, possibly pushing 32 near the coast of Louisiana, and that 30 degree isotherm tong extending now quite a way up the uh, Gulf Stream there off the Atlantic coast. If any storms end up in those areas, we'll be watching very closely, uh, particularly in the Gulf for rapid intensification. 
Indian Ocean is looking okay, uh, pushing 28 degrees, 30 degrees Celsius, depending on exactly where. The Western Pacific is obviously more interesting uh, when we look at these potential systems or the one system that might form. It's got some very warm water ahead of it, 30 degrees plus, and still 28 degrees all the way through the uh, Ryukyu Islands and possibly all the way to the coast of China. So temperatures there looking extremely good for future storms in the tropical zones, as you'd expect of course in the West Pack. Some massive warm pools in the higher latitudes at the moment. In the tropical zones though it's a little bit half and half. Uh, a La Nina effect there still quite clear in the central Pacific. In the west it's slightly above average generally. In the east it's around average with a few cold pools and in the Atlantic it's above average particularly in the Gulf. There's the uh, areas now, the oceanic heat content, extremely uh, warm areas now uh, forming in the Caribbean Sea. If storms form over there, it's going to be rocket fuel for them. And in the Western Pacific, the same too, um, off the coast of the Philippines, which is pretty normal. Uh, but still, good conditions extending further and further north as we get through this season. So let's check our computer models then and annoyingly these haven't updated for me either so I'm going to rely on memory uh, but we're looking right now at the eastern pacific which is throwing up that tropical storm that's eventually going to form out of this invest it's uh, significant in size it's uh, probably moderate I would say and as you can see there it shouldn't really be affecting the coast of Mexico it is another storm that's going to push on uh, well out to sea following the same lines as those previous hurricanes that we've been watching that has provided a little bit of upwelling. Let's look at this shot right now. I think we're looking at the Western Pacific, but I've no idea whether we are or not. Uh, what this should be depicting is a tropical cyclone eventually forming and trying to get a uh, gale wind radius around the whole uh, center as it moves through the Ogasawara Island chain and south of Japan. And then eventually it'll push on into the East China Sea and starts to really get um, itself going towards typhoon strength and on this last shot which once again I can't see is the Indian Ocean uh, which should be showing you the progress of this potential tropical cyclone in the South Indian Ocean GFS toing and throwing is just how developed it gets it's still a close one to call if you believe this model other models are still in slight agreement with something happening so we've kept it at 10% although it is going to be for the most part a very weak tropical cyclone if it does manage that feat. In the longer range this is the 5 to 10 day period I can finally look at the updated model here and I can tell you exactly what's happening with this next storm it continues onwards into the uh, towards the central pacific but doesn't last very long probably as a result of upwelling from previous storms and the fact that it's quite large and it doesn't really get its symmetry particularly well sorted out. Having said that, the GFS has, um, well not really the GFS, but the NHC has underrated storms in their weakening phases so far this year in the Eastern Pacific. GFS there possibly giving you a best case for it. Here's the Western Pacific and you see this typhoon moving on onto the coast of China. This kind of track is uh, quite common at this time of year, we've witnessed in previous seasons. Um, so we can't rule that out and that would be quite a substantial landfall, not uh, quite uncomfortably close to the Shanghai metro area. In fact, pretty much right on the nose there and then it moves inland. Um, so we'll see how that happens. That's in the five to 10 day period. So it is still quite far out and things change quite easily. Well, that's all the serious stuff done with. So at this point I can tell you about our merch store. Scan the barcode will take you to our store page. There's loads of fun stuff there to enjoy, including the still waiting for Hone t-shirts. You can also request full season or individual animations on demand. Well, in the Silly Range, this is what we're looking at in the Eastern Pacific. And to be honest, the Silly Range today isn't particularly exciting. It's just another Eastern Pacific storm that eventually forms there around the 8th of August, which is feels like a very long time away, but it's about two weeks. And there it is developing into a substantial hurricane there. Um, continuing that trend, that train of tropical cyclones into the eighth month of the year. So that would be rather interesting if that happened. Lower latitude uh, only develops much further out to sea than previously. So if that did happen, it would have a higher chance of being strong. 
Well, on July 26, 1987, a whole different situation was panning out. Two tropical storms in the eastern Pacific, but the main feature was wind in the western Pacific, which had just passed the northern Mariana Islands, and whilst it was a small storm, it was very picturesque looking at that satellite image there. A much larger storm was to its west, that went by the name of Alex. It was much weaker as well, a Category 1, which was just moving through the Luzon Strait, uh, just to the northeast of the Philippine Islands. So quite a busy day on this day in 1987, we probably would have been quite busy. But mysteriously, we are still waiting for our next storms to form. We've been stuck at 36 for quite a while. The next name in the Atlantic is Danielle, in the Eastern Pacific it's Frank, and in the Central Pacific we are undoubtedly still waiting for Hone. In the Western Pacific, the next name on the list now is Songda, the North Indian Ocean. We'll see Sitrang next up, and who knows when that might be. In the Southern Hemisphere though, in the Australian region, the next name on the list is Darien. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, Ashley will kick us off in the new season whenever that happens. And in the South Pacific, we are now waiting for Harley. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.